So hello everyone, uh, thank you very much for taking a little bit of time with us here today, Keith. Um, so we will be able to talk a little bit about your project, Republic. So we will have a little bit of questions. Uh, why did you decide, for example, to build on the top of Streamer? But first of all, maybe we can begin with a very fast intro, like who is, who is Keith and what is Republic as well? Yeah, um, my name is Keith Axline. I'm uh, maybe best described as a solopreneur. I do freelance development, um, but I'm also I've kind of notoriously started a bunch of projects over the years, the main one. Um, being Republic that uh, is maybe like four or five years kind of into my tinkering and in its most realized form right now. And it's a platform of open source software, like mobile app currently that helps you collect and control your personal data. And part of that uh, is monetization. So uh, monetizing your data, but that's not uh, the only reason that we're around Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I think the monetization is always something that interests a lot of people that that we saw also in other projects. But um, mm -hmm. so so one of the big questions, of course, is why did you actually decide to build on top of streamer network? Because there is uh -huh. so much outside today in Web3, but t today you're here. So maybe you can explain a little bit more to the people why. Yeah, well, I've been interested in uh, this concept of data ownership, data sovereignty, data dignity. It has a lot of uh, different labels, but uh, just this idea of control for, for years, but I was having trouble finding my people. And through a series of social alerts that I had set up, I uh, found Streamer and reached out and uh, started playing with the, uh, the SDK and having conversations with uh, Matthew Fontana, at the head of ecosystem. And uh, I was planning on doing all the stuff that streamer does with client server, just kind of like web two stuff. I, I thought, uh, blockchain and decentralization was overhyped and overused, but I slowly turned from a, uh, a cynic to a believer. And that's kind of, uh, once I kind of understood the use case and all the stuff that's made possible, uh, by it, I kind of switched a portion of my, my infrastructure that I was going to build with just the client and server over to uh, the streamer network. Awesome. Cool. And is there other reasons maybe as well that you decided to switch from maybe at least go to web three, uh, because of course we can also build a lot of things in the web two, but we are today actually in web three. So is there other mm -hmm. maybe big reasons? Uh, well, at the time I was uh, trying to establish Republic as a, uh, as a co-op and uh, that became really difficult, at least in the U.S. as far as like all the legal hoops that you have to jump through. And it seemed to be really getting in the way of my intention, which to, was to just have like a user owned and controlled platform. Uh, it's my belief that to reach the really universal levels of data sharing that we need to, um, there can't be any extractive uh, intermediary in the in the data process, and certainly not in the uh, data sales. And so, um, as I got more into Web three, I think the DAO model started to seem really interesting, mm -hmm. and the way a community can kind of collect around, um, like the data token, for example, and how that actually um, kind of brings people together in a way that like a, just a legal co-op or like a membership kind of entity, uh, can't really, can't really do and, uh, coordinate people around a single mission, which is definitely what I was always trying to do with the software. Okay. Awesome. Um, so maybe for the people who, who would like to know as well, like is Republic for everyone who should really be interested today in Republic? Is it? just people from the web two or only people who are understands actually the vision about web three projects sometimes. Can you talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about what kind of targeting Republic actually has? Well, it's a little bit early days now. And so the people that we're trying to attract are like really mission driven, uh, people who are passionate about data ownership, data sovereignty, and want the tools that, uh, come along to help you. They want them to be open source and user owned and controlled. And so those are the people we're asking to join up right now, but the software itself is targeted towards, um, a very mainstream 
audience where I'm as a former web three crypto skeptic, I'm, I'm very cognizant of the UX experience around <laughs> web three and crypto and like the mission, uh, has always been like between signing up, um, and like pressing a few buttons in the app, we'd like you, you to be receiving money in your bank account. If that's, uh, if you are deciding to monetize within like, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes or so. Um, and so that requires like a heavy lift on the UX side and doing a lot of the, um, hiding a lot of the complexity. And so until we get there, I don't expect a bunch of, uh, normies to be on board as it were. <laughs> uh, but, and so I'm, I'm really just making a plea to people who understand the, the vision right now, but the, the product is definitely targeted towards potentially everybody. Yeah, it's crazy. So the mass adoption is not really for the, for the moment, it's more research and trying to push really something out. Um, mm -hmm. maybe to give an idea for the people as well, when we talk about monetization, what can we expect? Can we expect something like $5 at the, at the end of the month to help a little bit, or can we expect much more? Um, I, I might be, this might not age well, but I'm convinced that like, in, if we were measuring it in today's dollars, that everyone would be producing around $2,000 a month or something <laughs> like at least enough to live on. Uh, for most people. Um, and that's, but that's assuming like a perfectly efficient mm. market where every buyer can find uh, every piece of data that anyone's producing. But I think um, that that's really the way that we're hearing like the buyers want to go, like um, researchers, product developers, they want to know everything <laughs> basically. <laughs> and so they're going to come for it one way or another. And so we Republic wants to be there, uh, making sure that that happens in a, in a way that uh, gives autonomy to the, the person providing the data, people like you and me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's very important. So, but there's still a lot of work indeed. And I think there are so many different ideas on the long run, but um, there's, a, there's so much to do today in the web three. And we do understand today that we should change what was happening since the last 20, 30 years, or even a little bit more. So, um, so yeah, hundred percent agree. Can we talk a little bit as well about the roadmap? So, uh, when this product, uh, actually started of Republic and where we are today and what are the goals for the next months or even years from here? Uh, yeah. So the, right now it's an Android IO and iOS mobile app, um, built in react native and it is on the play store and the app store. Um, but that's just the very small kind of entry point. I think, um, on the roadmap is a desktop app where you can, uh, manage your devices. So, um, we're already finding that, you know, obviously users have their phone, but maybe also a tablet, uh, their laptop and all of that is kind of collecting its own, uh, interesting data, and especially when combined together. And so, uh, the idea is to give users a dashboard for like their digital asset management. Um, and if they buy, you know, a new home security system or a smart device or, or whatever that they're, they're able to, um, onboard those and get, get a visceral idea of their digital footprint and then have the tools to decide what to do with that, including monetize, but not, uh, exclusively. Mm. Yeah, it seems really fun as well, to be honest. I think it's so important for people to have that kind of desktop where they can just see what's really happening, how much they can also earn with it. It should be a little bit maybe focused, not like a game, but something where you enjoy going on top, going to uh -huh. see what's actually happening there. I agree. Right. That's really nice. Yeah, there's some gamification aspects and there's a surprising uh, environmental aspect to this, like uh, data using verification to uh, monitor accurately like the the environment and different uh, effects in different locations um, i think that really can't happen the way it needs to without that incentivization as far as um, uh, incentivizing people to like put up the right kinds of uh, devices and collect the right kinds of data uh, that that the world needs and lots of different organizations need to just figure out what's what's going on in the world and is is what we're doing effective and how bad is that sort of thing 
Okay, awesome. Maybe to, for just for the audience as well, um, how does it work? Is it DAO today? How will everything be decided actually on the long run as well? Uh, yeah, we're kind of self-declared as a DAO, but um, we're kind of holding back as far as what makes the most sense for a legal entity. Um, but if you're interested uh, in being a part of it, uh, there's a Discord server. That's mainly where things happen. There's a blog. Um, follow us on, on Twitter. And uh, we're at maybe 100 people or so. <laughs> and so you're, you can definitely have like a big influence if you kind of join up. We're kind of in it for the, the long term. You know, I, I view this as a 10 to 20 year um, project. And so uh, if that excites you, I, I definitely encourage you to check us out. Um, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. I have one last question for you. Um, there is this kind of bridge to the future for data. So we, we know that data is something that has been here for so long and it's something very powerful for something very powerful as well. Uh, can you tell us the difference from the past, the beginning, the present, the day, and what is the future for data? This kind of bridge. Uh, yeah, I mean, data for most of the time has been very invisible, I would say. <laughs> like the, the passive data is, I mean, and that's why it's taken us so long to really understand the value of it and why we so freely kind of gave it away to more like uh, extractive um, apps and services, like right as the internet came around, because um, we didn't really understand it. Now, I think retroactively, we can go back and see that, you know, many forms of communication like radio and, and uh, telephone were could be viewed as like data networks. And, uh, and then going forward, it's going to encompass not only uh, voice or text or, <laughs> or video, but just basically all sorts of whatever you can think of is a form of data. Mm -hmm. And so where we're at now, I think, is the the only thing that's uh, showed us how valuable it is is the advertising industry, and that is like a very small <laughs> slight of the value. And I think if we focus on just replicating the um, those same, that same scale of financialization for users, then we're going to miss uh, kind of the profound opportunity here, um, where it's really a culmination of everything that's kind of nascent in citizen science and um you know all the uh smart home and all this stuff is really just converting the physical world into the digital world to more and more degrees of accuracy and i think everyone plays a part in that and so the idea with republic is to connect the value that that all those activities create uh with the people who are going to benefit from it and so in the future, I view data as more like a connective tissue for just the global society as a way for us to coordinate and share goals and then achieve those goals. The It's all mediated through this mm -hmm. kind of uh, value exchange of like, I have this, I know this, and now, you know, you're going to pay me this much or give me this, and now you know it too, but happening almost instantly in, in real time. So I think that's what's exciting about uh, infrastructure like like Streamer Network is we can kind of get a taste for that and put our toehold in in the right uh, in the right framing. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. This is the, the really exciting part, actually, to see where we can go with this, because there's still a lot to build, of course. Uh, this is long term projects mostly. So uh, very exciting moments, to be honest, because it's really early. So uh, I can't wait to see the, the next years from now. So awesome. Uh, Keith, thank you very much for answering all these questions. Um, of course, I will put all the links in the description of this video. So feel free to join if you have any questions. I will as well be very happy to answer them. Uh, you can also join on the Discord. We will, be, we will be very happy to be able to answer all the questions. And uh, Keith, I wish you a very good evening. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, I hope to see you very, very soon. Thanks. Likewise, Anthony. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.